I'm Dr. Steven Dominguez, and today we're going to be discussing a very intriguing topic known as Am I genetically predisposed to be obese? You know, this is a very difficult question, and there are many multivariate uh, answers. The biggest one is, is it nature or nurture? Well, let's talk about that. There's a lot of research that talks that genetics does have an influence. Usually it's genetics due to mutations. Now, there are multiple genetic mutations that have been associated with the development of obesity. For example, there's the HOB1 or human obesity 1 protein, leptin gene, the melanocortin 4 receptor gene. These are three major genes that are mutated in response to sunlight. There's the pro-opiomelanocortin gene. There's the agouti-related protein receptor gene. And then there's the thrifty gene. That one will go into more detail because it's very, very intriguing. Let's talk first about the human obesity 1 mutated gene. This is a gene that we know has been mutated and will contribute to obesity. Also, we know that there is the leptin mutation. A deficiency of leptin will lead to obesity. The melanocortin 4 receptor mutated gene, this is a gene that when mutated no longer shuts off your urge to eat. The pro opium melanocortin mutated gene results in the following, red hair, deficiency of stress hormones, and obesity. So, this is something that's true and real for a subsequent population. Now, we also have mutated agouti related protein receptors. Those play a minimal role. Nonetheless, they do predispose you to obesity. This is intriguing. This is real. This is known as a thrifty gene concept. This is a concept. This is a theoretical concept of intake versus expenditure result in mismatch which results in obesity. Now, the average American by age 55 will gain 50 pounds of weight. Weight being fat. Not muscle, not bone. Why? The thrifty gene concept is pretty simple. It says, when we were much more active, work in the fields, when we were an industrialized nation, for instance our grandparents, we were consuming lots of high fiber foods, low glycemic index foods, in other words they were not refined, high protein, and low fat. This combination allowed us to stay slim and to stay active and healthy. Now, as society has progressed, the thrifty gene is no longer necessary. So, we now are eating foods that are processed, low in protein, high in fat, high glycemic index. These foods now are being consumed by a gene process that allows us to store, store fat for energy, release later. Later when? We're not exercising, we're a sedentary society, you know that. You know, do your kids play video games or do they kick a ball? Do you go running, jogging, or do you sit home and watch TV? Again, the thrifty gene said, I must take what I'm consuming, I must use it wisely uh, for the expenditure from my muscles. The thrifty gene now says, I am taking these foods, I need to conserve it so I can spend it wisely. Notice I said conserve. So I'm conserving this as fat. So, this is a theoretical concept. I think it's applicable. I certainly believe in it. It leads to obesity and it leads to at least 300,000 American deaths per year directly related to obesity. Don't be a statistic. Lose 5 to 10% of your weight if your BMI is over 25. Look at the other lectures that are on this series. I hope that you find them informative. I hope you'll, fi you'll find them and share them with your family and your friends. I'm Dr. Stephen Dominguez. God bless.